Yeah, we back. We back again, man. Now, as you can see, take a look up on the screen. Niger gets a major show of support from Mali Burkina Faso after the end of the coup reversal deadline. The show of solidarity comes amid a possibility of a West African military intervention after the end of the deadline imposed by the leaders of the regional bloc for the reversal of last month's coup in Niger. Now, I told y'all the other day or yesterday that Mali and Burkina Faso, they did send a delegation down to Niger to show support. And they already let it be known that any military intervention, any military expedition, any military invasion into Niger will be seen as a declaration of war against both Burkina Faso and Mali. Now, take a look up on the screen. Mali and Burkina Faso send delegations to Niger to reaffirm support for Niger's new rulers. All three nations are former French colonies where anti-colonial sentiment has soared in recent years. This is a spokesperson from the government in Mali. And I believe his brother's name is Abdoulaye Maiga. And he is a, I believe he is a lieutenant uh, colonel in the, in the Malian army. He said this, I would like to remind you that Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger have been dealing for over 10 years with the negative socioeconomic security and political and humanitarian consequences of the hazardous adventure by NATO in Libya. You guys remember the invasion of, uh, you know what happened to Gaddafi in Libya. You already know what happened. I don't got to, uh, I don't got to go into that. Of course, we ask ourselves, if it took us 10 years, how many years would it take us to get over another adventure of the same nature in Niger? We don't know. 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. One thing is certain. President Goita and President Traore have clearly said, no, no, and no. We will not accept military intervention in Niger. They are coming for our survival. The purpose of the delegation consisting of ministers and representatives of law enforcement agencies was to demonstrate solidarity with Niger under the sanctions imposed on Niamey, that's the capital of Niger, by ECOWAS, as well as to coordinate response actions in case of external aggression. The members of the delegation were received by the head of the national SSR, I believe that's the, the military government, Brigadier General Chiani, who received the messages of the presidents of both Mali and Burkina Faso. Now, I believe ECOWAS sent representatives either yesterday or today over to Niger once again to uh, resume diplomatic negotiations. And as you can see, take a look up on the screen. The authorities of Niger have refused the arrival of a joint delegation by ECOWAS, the United Nations and the African Union. A verbal note was sent to ECOWAS to this effect. So just like yesterday, when the United States had sent that diplomat Victoria Nuland, they didn't want to talk to her. They refused. They refused to meet with her. They refused to talk to her. She spoke to like the second in command or the third in command. She was not able to meet uh, the coup leader or President Bazoum, and she had to go back home. She had to go back to Washington. And the same thing happened today to the leaders of ECOWAS, the UN, and the African Union. And in fact, I told you in my video yesterday, the chairman of the African Union is persona non grata in both Mali and Burkina Faso. So he not even he not even allowed to come over there. You know what I'm saying? They said, nigga, don't even, don't even come over here, bro. We, we ain't trying to, we ain't even trying to speak to you, big bro. So that's what's going down. Let's continue. This is a note from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs from the military government in Niger. It's a rough translation from French. You can pause the video if you want to take a look at it. But uh, yeah, let's continue. The National Assembly in Senegal argues against military intervention in Niger leaning more towards a diplomatic approach. Now, if you remember, the foreign minister in Senegal, she had already jumped out the window like Tinubu and said she's ready for war. So just like her and Tinubu, she would, listen, she put out the strap prematurely. She just, you jump out the window way too soon, man. You are way too excited to defend the interests of American and French multinational corporations, man. You ain't even consult with the, you just, man, y'all jumped out the window mad fat. Her and Tinubu just jumped out the goddamn window and just landed on their face, man. I don't know what the hell was wrong with them, man. God damn. But anyways, on Sunday, thousands gathered at a stadium in Niger's capital to show support of the military government. Niger is rich with its wealth of resources. The West African country holds the world's seventh largest uranium deposits. In 2019 itself, about 2,982 tons of uranium was produced by the two operating mines in the country. Niger, however, still remains one of the poorest countries in the world. Many citizens in Niger view France's record as the colonial power responsible for the currently prevailing poverty levels in the country. The new governing body's decision to remove, I don't know how to pronounce her name, Aichatu Bulama, from her role as Niger's ambassador to France has been met with controversy. The French government is raising objections to her dismissal and expressing a desire to preserve her position. So, obviously, you know, when the government is overthrown, 
those who were in their positions previously they are swapped out for obviously new members right so the ambassador to france is being removed from her position but the french government is petitioning on her behalf and i actually have a translation of a note put out by the french ministry of foreign affairs take a look up on the screen and i'm going to read a little bit of it it says this madame ambassador in response to your letter on the 4th of August, I would like to express my full solidarity with you as well as the president of Niger, Mohamed Bazoum, with his government and with the people of Niger. France's position, like that of all the European Union, is and will remain extremely clear in the face of the coup attempt that has been underway since the 26th of July. President Mohamed Bazoum, elected by the people of Niger, is the only president of the Republic of Niger, and France does not recognize any legitimacy in the announcements and initiatives of the coup leaders. In this context, for the French Republic, you are and remain the ambassador of the Republic of Niger in France. I assure you of my confidence and my full support in the exercise of your mission. So basically, like I said, man, the French government and uh, all of her allies they do not view the current government as the legitimate government. They still view Mohamed Bazoum's administration as the legitimate government for their economic and political interests. That makes sense, but that's not the reality on the ground because Mohamed Bazoum is locked in some basement somewhere, so we don't know where the hell he's at. So obviously, he's not the true president as it stands right now. That could change, but as it stands right now, he is not the president. He has no power. Now, let's continue. Now, take a look up on the screen. Burkina Faso announces the termination of the non-double taxation treaty with France that was signed in 1967. The tax treaty for non-double taxation initially signed on August 11th, 1965 between Burkina Faso and the French Republic and later amended in 1971 has lost its alignment with Burkina Faso's interests. Diplomatically, it has been terminated officially on August 7th, 2023. So that was yesterday. Now, what is a um, non-double taxation treaty? What exactly does that mean? You know, for, for, you know, regular people like us who who don't understand that complex political uh, terminology, a non double taxation treaty is an international agreement between two countries that eliminates the possibility of double taxation for individuals or corporations that pretty much do business in Burkina Faso and France. So if you do business or you have interest in Burkina Faso and France due to this treaty, you would not be double tax, right? You would not be taxed double on whatever you got going on. In those two countries basically imagine that you have a job in burkina faso but you also have investments in france or vice versa now without this treaty you might end up paying taxes on your income and investments double you might end up paying double the taxes that you would with this treaty in place in theory these treaties are designed to how do i say encourage trade and investment between the two countries and making the tax system more predictable now if the treaty is terminated it's going to make people and businessmen less willing to trade and invest between Burkina Faso and France. Now, Burkina Faso, just like Mali and Niger, they're not really trying to maintain diplomatic, political and economic relations with France. So on their end, they don't really care. But if you are if you are an elite French businessman that might have interest in the region, that might have economic incentives in the region, this is going to be another roadblock. This is going to be another uh, another issue that you're going to have to deal with, you know, politics affecting the economy, you know, it's one in the same. So if you are an elite French businessman, now doing business is going to be way more complicated. It's going to be, you're going to have to, you know, do way more administrative work. You're going to have to hire potentially more people to, you know, do the, you know, the, the boring shit behind the scenes to make sure you got your paperwork in order. It's going to be a reduced incentive for investment, you know, so it's just a lot going on, man. It's a lot going on. You know, especially if you're going back and forth, you're going to face challenges to your residency status for tax purposes. It's a lot, bro. It's a lot. You know, it doesn't mean much, but it's a lot. You know, these governments are, are making a lot of quick changes, bro. A lot of quick changes. They turn the shit around. They shaking shit up. So we just watching, man. We're just waiting and seeing how the landscape plays out. Now, let's continue. The United States president, Joe Biden, has not and cannot refer to Niger as a coup since doing so would require him to terminate all military and economic assistance to the Nigerian government. Now, now let this be a lesson on leverage, right? Let this be a lesson on leverage. The United States government does not want to acknowledge what is happening in Niger as a coup because in doing so, that would require them to terminate all military and economic cooperation with Niger. They would be forced to cut political relations with Niger and due to the fact that Niger is such a, an important strategic asset they don't want to do that they don't want to jump out the window just yet because unlike the governments of 
of Nigeria and Senegal that jumped out the window talking about war and bloodshed and violence on the first day, the United States is more sophisticated than that. They're going to sit back. They're not going to jump out the window just yet. They're going to sit back and they're going to observe because the United States is more politically sophisticated than certain governments in West Africa. You know, they're not jumping out the window like a bunch of idiots, you know, flashing the, flashing the weapon and they ain't ready to use it. Now, let's continue. In the event of a military intervention, there are indications that certain countries will align with Niger. These countries are Mali, Burkina Faso, Guinea, Algeria, and Libya. Now, we got some breaking news, some new developments. Take a look up on the screen. Niger has been hit with more sanctions as the military government rebuffs the latest diplomatic mission. Niger was slapped with more sanctions on Tuesday, hours after the new military leaders rejected the latest diplomatic mission aimed at restoring constitutional order following a July 26 coup. Nigeria's President Tinubu has ordered the new sanctions through Nigeria's central bank aimed at squeezing those involved in the takeover, a presidential spokesperson said. God damn, Tinubu. God damn. God damn, big bro. God damn. Let's continue. It came after Niger's junta denied permission to enter Niger to a joint delegation from ECOWAS, the African Union, and the United Nations, resisting pressure from the United States and the UN to come to the negotiation table. Now, let's continue. No options have been taken off the table, the spokesperson told reporters in Abuja, adding that far-reaching decisions will be taken at the summit concerning the bloc's next steps. Explaining the decision to not allow the delegation in on Tuesday, Niger's junta said it could not guarantee their safety in the face of popular anger. It also denounced a climate of threatened aggression against Niger. An AU spokesperson confirmed that a mission had been denied access while ECOWAS declined to comment. The junta had already snubbed meetings with a senior U.S. envoy and another ECOWAS delegation. Now, let's continue. Heads of state from ECOWAS are preparing for a summit on Thursday to discuss their standoff with the junta, which defied an August 6 deadline to reinstate the president. We are still hopeful and we are still trying to achieve a result that is a return to constitutional order, U.S. State Department spokesperson Matthew Miller told reporters on Tuesday. Now, as you can see, take a look up on the screen. Local businesses in northern Nigeria feel the sting of regional sanctions against neighboring Niger. You see... Nigeria, like Tinubu, I don't know what he's trying to do. Is he trying to show the Western powers, like, yo, bro, I'm, I'm one of the, I'm one of the black men that you can trust. I don't know if he's trying to, because you're destroying your economy, you're destroying your credibility amongst a large amount of your constituents, uh, you're betraying your, your, your Muslim brothers. You know, you're going against, you're going against your brothers in Islam in favor of the, of the Christians from Europe. <laughs> In favor of the white Christians from Europe, you're going against your your, your your black Muslim brothers in Africa. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. But anyways, let's jump into this article right here. A decision by a block of West African nations to shut down their borders with Niger as a way of sanctioning the coup plotters is harming the local businesses in Nigeria, where a cross-border economy has existed for years. Oh, my God, bro. Oh, my goodness. Ah, oh, Tinubu, bro. You're going to destroy... Yo, the white boys would never destroy their own economy just to help you, bro. They would never fuck up their own money just to help... I'm sorry, but they, they're not going to do that, bro. They're just not going to do it. Like, it's, it's not going to happen. Let's continue. Niger accounts for 75% of the total value of exports from Nigeria's cross-border trade, according to a study by the Central Bank of Nigeria. The bank's latest report in 2016 valued goods traded across the border with Niger at $934 million per year. Oh my God, you're going to fuck up a $900 million economy just to help out the white boys in France? Tinubu, you bug the fuck out. <laughs> Tinubu, bug the fuck out. Let's continue, man. In Nigeria's northwestern Katsina state, the border's closure and restricted traffic on nearby roads left dozens of trucks stranded for days, most of them loaded with food items and other perishable goods. Prices of livestock, animal products, and some commodities usually supplied from the city of Maradi in Niger have increased. Tinubu is seeking to make a good impression on the international scene. Niger's coup is the first test of Tinubu's leadership. In the border region, local residents say business owners have taken advantage of the border closure to hike the prices of other goods. God damn, Tinubu, god damn. You see, Tinubu, Tinubu, if you focus, if you focus more on establishing your country to a self-sufficient state, right? If you focused on, you know, modernizing the education, modernizing the healthcare, modernizing the economy, then you would not have to fly to France for medical care, right? If you focused on establishing Nigeria to a self-sufficient and prosperous state, 
You wouldn't need to go fly to France. You wouldn't need to go vacation to Europe. You wouldn't need to maintain these European connections. The reason why you got to maintain these European connections is because you haven't established what you need to establish at home. If you were able to establish what you were able to establish at home, you would have the leverage. You wouldn't be tied down. You wouldn't have your hands tied behind your back. And you wouldn't be blackmailed by these men who are obviously holding things over your head because because of the fact that you are beholden to them for whatever reason, right? You don't have the leverage to really poke your chest out and really flex your muscle. They have leverage over you. So for whatever leverage they got over you, the Senate is not supporting you. The people are not supporting you. You're destroying your own local economy. I don't understand. Maybe maybe you have some personal interest in it. I don't know. But anyways, man, it's your boy Nefakari Dessalim back in the... Actually, nah, take a look up on the screen before we get out of here. I want to read this tweet that this brother put out. I think it was an excellent tweet. He said this. Africa's liberation must face the defensive and offensive line of other Africans protecting their colonial masters before it can even put a dent in the armor of Western imperialism. This is a sad reality. And the crazy thing about it is France is not even the colonial master of Nigeria. But due to the fact that Tenebu got connections up in France, he got personal interests up in France, he got property up in France, he got doctors and medical care that he getting out of France. You know, it is what it is, man. You know. It is what it is. Now, it's your boy Nefakari Dessalim back in the building. Yes, indeed. Cash have up on the screen and I'm gone. Peace. Shaking hands, offering arms. Delegations from Mali and Burkina Faso flew to Niger's capital Niamey to show their support for the coup leaders. The three West African countries are now all ruled by military juntas. They say they'll defend Niger against any external intervention. Reincarnated, I'm back in the original fashion. I left on a horse and came back in that ass. And I left with abundance and came back to famine. We used to be pyramids, now we be rapping. Look how the mighty have fallen. Used to be running, now we be walking. When you be cooning, that's when they applauded. Selling your soul, your sons and your daughter. Gotta come up in this shit. They stuck in the mix. Really, my heart would be breaking. That's why I'm stacking that paper and handle my business. Pass it down in generation. Talking about money and power and building a nation. That's a deadly combination. Never be watching the TV, they pushing the genders. Falsifying information. No, they got malice intentions. Step in the room and I'm feeling attention. Enemy watching, he blocking my vision. Get for the check, cause I need my redemption. Building my kingdom, I need it protected. Ready for war like a young money Congo. Never decided the team is the motto. Up in the crib and I'm whipping up waffles. Up in the crib and I'm smoking gelato. I'm chilling, I'm taking my pain and making ambition. I'm blessed by the guys, but I ain't religious. I came for the power, they came for the bitch. They making no hour, they wage. I got business. This shit is an art, and they can never be taught. Selling my soul, I can never be bought. Play with my money, I see you ain't caught. Run to the check and I do it for sport. Babylon falling, I go to the source. Packing my luggage and go overseas. Shorty be with me and she so at least. Shorty be chugged and I'm calling her Hershey. Secret intelligence probably gonna murder me. Don't fuck with brands, cause nigga, I'm Haitian. Say the wrong shit and you're smacking their faces.